Today's episode, we are diving deep on executive function and literacy. If you know a child with executive function difficulties, a child who has ADHD, this is an episode that is a must see for you. And that's because the research indicates that children that have executive function difficulties are more likely to have literacy difficulties that persist throughout elementary age. What we're going to do in this episode is we're diving deep. We're going to look at three executive function core skills and how they're going to impact literacy development. Let's get started. The first skill we're going to look at is we're going to look at inhibitory control. That's the child's ability to control their attention, their behavior, their thoughts, their emotions. We're going to talk about it on an attention level. So when we're thinking about print knowledge, the child has to pay attention to the small differences in the print. Is this a P or is this a B or is this a D? Is this a T or is this an F? In order for the child to have good decoding skills so they're able to fluently identify letters, they need to have good attention skills to pay attention to those details. Let's look at a second area, phonological awareness. So for instance, in the phonological awareness skill of a lesion or segmenting, where you take a word, you subtract a sound or you subtract a syllable from that word, and you're able to say what the word is, you need a lot of attention for that. This is a very important phonological awareness skill of a lesion. It's highly predictive of how children are going to perform in elementary schools skills through elementary age. You're going to have to have excellent inhibitory control and an excellent ability to pay attention with all of the processes that are happening. You need stamina and duration to the attention, which you're maintaining attention in a multiple step process. Let's look at a third skill, narrative development. If you have a poor inhibitory control, ability to control your thoughts and your attention and your emotions and your behaviors, it's going to be difficult to stay on topic and a narrative. So you're reading a narrative and you say, okay, this is the title of the story. Okay. And this is the key sentences and what we're going to cover. And then whoop, I'm distracted by that flag out the window. So the narrative skills are going to be difficult because you don't have the endurance to stick with a story. So a story is not like a word and it's not like a sentence. A story at the narrative level is multiple paragraphs sequenced together. It requires attention, 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 sustained attention, inhibitory control. If you have poor inhibitory control, it is going to impact not only your print knowledge, it's also going to impact your phonological awareness skills. And lastly, it's going to affect your narrative skills. Let's dive into the second executive function core skill, and that is verbal working memory. Verbal working memory is the ability to process verbal information, remember it, and then express it. How is that going to impact literacy skills? From a print knowledge perspective, it's going to impact the child's ability to do letter to sound correspondence. So they're going to say, for instance, let's remember that the A makes an A a sound. The B is the B sound. Not only do you need to remember the letter, you're also going to need to remember that the letter translates into a sound. This is verbal working memory. Remember the letter, remember the sound, and then be able to express it when you read that letter. If you have poor verbal working memory, translating the alphabetical letter into a sound is going to be difficult for you. Let's look at the phonological awareness. A really important phonological awareness skill is blending. That's the ability to blend phonemes together, for instance, to create words. So, k -e -t spells cat. What does that require? It requires verbal working memory in that you're going to process C, A, and T, remember it, sequence it, put it together, then express it. If you have poor verbal working memory, 
Blending is going to be difficult. Blending is how we learn to read words. We combine phonemes to create words. It is one of the most predictive phonological awareness skills. If you have poor verbal working memory, it's going to directly impact your ability to blend sounds to create words or blend syllables to create words. Let's look at narrative. Poor verbal working memory is going to make it very difficult for you to recall multiple events in a story. So if the story is topical, it can be key points in the story. Can you remember the three ideas that were presented in that story to support the thesis? Maybe it's chronological. Can you remember what happened first, then next, and lastly? Maybe it's relationship. Can we remember that this is the cause, this is the problem, and that this is the solution? This requires verbal working memory. Once again, when we get to the narrative level is when things are going to get really hard. Now you're not remembering just sounds or you're not remembering just words. You're remembering paragraphs of information and you're putting those in order. This is by far the most challenging task of all when it comes to verbal working memory. Now we're going to go to the third executive function core skill. And that one is cognitive flexibility. Cognitive flexibility is your ability to think flexibly when the environment changes. So from the decoding level, you have to think, for instance, sometimes the C is going to be a soft C that sounds like S, and sometimes the C is going to be a hard C that sounds like K. And these are the context clues that are going to change whether it sounds like C or whether it sounds like K. Or you can look at the vowels. Sometimes the vowel is going to be a short vowel and sometimes the vowel is going to be a long vowel. So these are all requiring cognitive flexibility and the decoding. So let's look at the second scale, phonological awareness. If we look at the phonological awareness skill of change because of the change depending on the surrounding sounds. We can think of a word, for instance, that is like bake, B-A-K-E. There's an E at the end. Because there's an E at that end of the sound, it's going to become a long A. This is when you have knowledge of the ending of the sound and how that impacts how the entire word is spoken. If you look at the word back, B-A-C-K, because that ends in a K sound, it's going to be a short A, A. Once again, what we're thinking about with cognitive flexibility is you're looking at phonological awareness and understanding that words have a beginning, a middle, and end, and that each of the sounds impact one another. This is where cognitive flexibility is going to go into play on a phonological awareness level. Now let's look at the third area, narratives. Now with narratives, we have transitions and these transitions give us a cue that things are gonna change. We're gonna change directions here. We're gonna say something like, on the other hand, conversely, however, despite this, when we read those transitions, we have this strategic knowledge to say, let's be cognitively flexible and they're going to state a fact, but now they're going to say, take the totally different direction. So this requires cognitive flexibility at a narrative level where you're going to have to suddenly shift from A to Z when you're given those transition keywords. So that's how narratives are going to play out when it comes to cognitive flexibility. A child that doesn't have that cognitive flexibility is going to read that opening statement that says, many people see this as blah, 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 blah. And they're going to say, yeah, yeah. And then they're going to go and read on and they're going to say, despite these findings, and then the whole paper that's opposite of that first sentence. The person that lacks cognitive fl flexibility is going to say, I don't understand what's going on here. None of this supports their ideas. They're speaking out of both sides of their mouth here. They make no sense whatsoever. What are they trying to say here? They're saying opposite things. So that's what happens. They're totally lost in the narrative and they're pulled in two different directions because they're unable to adapt their think thinking based on the literacy environment. 
So what we did today is kind of funny because I've been on vacation with my husband and son and they like to look for snakes. And what they do is they pick up that log and look under that log to, to find snakes because under the log is where all the action is. And today we kind of picked up the log and said, this is this log called executive function. And we know children that have executive function difficulties are going to have greater problems with literacy. Let's turn it over and let's see where are these problems occurring. So what you're going to see if you're a member of speechpathology.com or if you join speechpathology.com is that for the month of August, I'm going to talk about how do we embed executive function intervention into our speech and language therapy sessions in a seamless manner in which it doesn't take away from the IEP goals. It's in there. It's educationally rich intervention in which we are improving executive function every step of the way because it's in the educationally rich activities we develop. So I'm very excited about this presentation. We see where the breakdowns are. Now we know what we need to work on. If you're ready to get in the intervention, join me in the month of August. It's going to be in speechpathology.com. And that's going to be on every Thursday live at 12 noon Eastern time. I've been actually working on this for about six or seven months right now. And at this point, I'm so excited to share it with you. I can't wait. I've been working on this series of four courses and how we can assess and provide literacy intervention in a seamless manner in which it's embedded in the educationally rich activities that we provide in meeting our communication goals. So I hope to see you beginning August 3rd. That's going to be the first Thursday. And then three after that, join me at 12 noon live. Make sure to ask a question or make a comment. I'd love to see that you're there. And I want you to take all this information, roll up your sleeves and make the world a better place. One child at a time. You are always going to be first.